In today's show, we're gonna talk about Power Apps import from Excel. We're gonna talk about how to use that to pull in static data in your app and how it does and doesn't work. Then we're gonna talk about a better way if you really wanna use Excel by hosting that out in Excel and OneDrive for Business. And then we're probably at the end gonna say, eh, I wouldn't use Excel at all, but we'll get to all that, so. But first, here's our intro. Hi, my name is Shane Young with Power Apps 911. Those guys. And today, we're gonna to talk about Power Apps importing from Excel. So this is one of those features that I don't use very often, but I get questions about here and there, and people have kind of said, hey, you should make a video on explaining what it is and what it isn't, which I think is more important. Um, and so I thought we'd kind of go through that today. Then we'll spend just a couple quick minutes, be like, all right, well, if import for Excel isn't exactly what you needed, then how can I get to my Excel data? So we'll talk about connecting that data into your Power App in a way that you can read and write it, and in the end, we'll probably mention a little bit that, you know, spoiler alert, I'm not a huge fan of Excel as a data source for your Power Apps, but it's up to you. All right, anyway, that's enough of the blah, blah, blah. Let's switch over to my desktop and take a look. Over here on my desktop, we've got a blank Power App, right, with nothing in it, and we got a couple Excel files open. So the first one we're gonna look at is this doggy data. And so this is your typical Excel spreadsheet, right? The key here, I got my data in rows and columns, and if you look, so if we go over here to, or if we select the whole table, I always forget how many to show up in Excel. There you go. If you go on table design, I have actually taken my data and formatted it as an actual Excel table, right? So there's a table name, it's called dog table, and, but it is a structured data table over here. Okay, so I want to pull this into my Power Apps. And one of the ways that you might want to do that is with the import from Excel. So. We got this all good. I'm going to close out of Excel here. Now, I do want you to notice that this link column is links or URLs. So, because something's gonna work in a second, you'll be like, why does that work? And it's because these are links, okay? So we're gonna close out of this. Now, over here in Power Apps, I've just got a blank app, right? I started a blank canvas. I haven't done anything to it yet. So the first thing I wanna do is kind of explore what's options here. So if we go over here to data, and then if we click on add data, we're gonna see that selected data source shows up. And so here, if you start to type in Excel, you're gonna see that you have import from Excel or Excel online business, right? Those are our two Excel options here. And so we wanna start with this import from Excel because I think that's what drove you here. So let's start there. So what's key to notice here is add static data to your app. So what this is going to do is this is gonna let you import data from Excel, like that file we were just looking at, remember? So doggy data right there. Oh, we've got a link to Fortnite, somehow that's an Excel thing, I don't know, whatever. We're gonna say open. And so then once you open up the file, it's gonna say choose a table. So it's showing me the tables. Remember we showed we defined a table in Excel? So it's showing me that dog table we defined. So we select that and we click on connect. What that is doing is that is importing the data into your app. What's key to understand though, is that it is no longer connected to the data in the Excel file. So if you go edit the Excel file, Power Apps doesn't know. If you edit the Power App data, well, actually you can't, but if you were able to, the Excel wasn't there, right? There's no connection to that Excel file. You just did a static one-time import from that Excel file into your app, okay? So that's the important thing to understand. But now that you have that data in here, it is table data. And so the easiest way I think to like mentally think of it is is a static collection if you're up with what collections are inside of power apps which is just like a table variable but so it's a static collection in your app that it goes with your app so you don't have to initialize it with app on start you don't have to do anything with it because you can't manipulate it you can just view the data to do that let's try this so we'll say insert hit the drop down over here gallery and then vertical and so now you can see that, like, oh, hey, data sources, the only one in your app is the dog table. So if you pull that in, it's gonna look nice, right? You're like, yay, I've got data. Remember, static data. I can't edit this, I can't modify this, I can't delete this, I can't update this. It is just literally the data we pulled directly in. But it is a tabular data source. So like, if I'm like, hey, instead of showing the color color here, I wanna show this item dot, and then we could say, is uh, first name. Oh, I had first name. Well, then we'll just say that. And space, 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 and this item dot last name. And there you go, we have Chewy Young. We go down here and maybe we'll change this one to be this item is good dog, is a good puppy. And so you can see that Adeline is good, Chewy is not. Right, so I can work with the data. All the data is there. 
um, in your app, but you can't modify it. So for example, if you said, okay, now I want to add a form. Well, great, add a form over here. And then if you knew, or you might not have known this, but with forms, you can't connect them to collections. Remember, we think of this as a collection. If you say, all right, add dog table. It accepts it, there doesn't throw any errors, but it's like this form isn't connected to any data because the data is not read writable. It is just viewable and forms can't work with um, non-data source data. So it doesn't, forms don't work with collections. They don't work with this data either. You're like, all right, well fine. I can't use forms, let's delete that form. What if I wanted to remove Adeline because she's a good dog? Well, I go here and be like, all right, let me icons. Uh, or I don't I already have an icon. Duh, I'll just change it. So from that to make it trash, trash is right there. And then on here, I'll put the code remove. And then what do I want to remove from? Um, dog table. What do I want to remove? This item. So that's the syntax we'd use with a real data source. But we try to do this, we get an error message. The data source is either read only or has no primary key. So the function remove can't write to it. There you go. We often will see that error message also with like SQL tables that don't have primary keys. This is Power Apps' way of saying, hey, I can't modify it because there's no key and it's not a thing. So remove doesn't work. If you were to throw a button on here and say, well, what if I want to add a new dog to this data set? Patch um, dog table uh, defaults dog table. It's all happy. And then we'll say um, first name right there. First name is Snoopy. Close that, close that. Once again, there's the error message and it is the exact same. I hope if I can get the mouse to show you, it's the same exact read only no primary key data source. So you can't manipulate this data source. So then why would you want to do it? Honestly, I don't know why you'd want to do it, but enough of you have asked, I'm going to go through it. I think the reason you might want to do this is say that you had like a Excel spreadsheet that had all of your locations and you just wanted to import that into your app one time and they were never ever going to change or a 10,000 part numbers. You want to import those in your app and just always have them in your app. That might be why you're thinking about doing it. I would push back, challenge you and say, hey, instead of importing those in as static data, I would rather you go create those as a data source somewhere. And if you're thinking like free data sources, probably a SharePoint list, put it all on a SharePoint list and connect it in and get it in that way. That way someone can maintain the SharePoint list and pull it in. Or if you had premium data sources like SQL or Dataverse, you know, that would be what I'd prefer that you did if you wanted to pull the data in. But if you truly just want to pull in a static copy to never ever be changed, awesome. The other nice thing about this static copy is that it's packaged in the app. Well, I guess it's a nice thing and a bad thing. So the nice thing about that is that, say you're building an offline app, you want that data just to statically be in here forever. That'd be fine because all of the you know ones and zeros that make up Chewy and Adeline and Apollo, those are all built into the app package itself. So when you deploy the Power App to their device, there it is, that data would be there because it doesn't uh, depend on a data source in any way. So something to think about there. Now, there are a couple of interesting things with this I want to point out. So one is, I don't know why I'm resizing this. One of those things I wanted to point out is that it, unlike a collection though, it doesn't have the same type of uh, boundaries for pulling in. So for example, if I say add data and then I import, um, ah, type in Excel, Shane. If I import again, so on my desktop, I have another one called Master Giant. It has like 5,000 some odd rows. So we're gonna say open. Oh, the file is in use, right? Can I have it open down here? Okay, I wanted to see how many rows I had. So let's see how many rows we got. You can tell I'm off script again. You know me, I'm always off script. So if we scroll all the way to the bottom and some Excel nerd is probably thinking, Shane, there's a button to do that. There probably is. I don't know it. I'm not Excel. Awesome. There you go. 5,038 rows or 5,037 rows because the first row was a header row. Anyway, before I can pull it in, I got to close the file. So I'll close the file. Now we'll click on this again. Now we'll say open again. Now it pulls in and that one, it was called table one. We'll pull this in and connect. So now I have table one and dog table. And what I wanted to show you is if we do a count rows here, count rows, and then table one, it should say that 5,300 or 5,037 number that we just said. So it does pull in, import all the rows. I've not tried to like stretch the boundary to see if it'll do 100,000 or a million. 
because that seems incredibly dumb and irresponsible, but you know, it doesn't have a hard limit at the delegation limit of 500 or 2000. So that is interesting. But keep in mind, because all of this is being loaded in memory, right? It's consuming browser memory every time you open the app because it's not fetching from a data source dynamically. It is hard coded in the app, these 5,000 rows. So you could cause yourself browser instability issues if you got to have too much data in there loaded all the time. Okay, so that was one. Now the other question that I got was, well, all right, so I imported all my locations because I thought it was a great idea. And lo and behold, we built a new building and now I need to update the locations. But I just told you you can't update it. That is correct, you can't. But what you can do, if you really had to pull this in, is what I, or a way I would do it, how about that? Is you can go here, we're gonna be brave, we're gonna remove dog tables to data source. My app is really angry right now, right? All my data is like, what? That's okay. Now, with it removed, if you say add data, and then we search for import again. Ah, I should have typed in Excel. Third time to charm, right? Excel, import from Excel. When we pull in doggy data again, we pull in the same dog table, right? Make sure the table name is exactly the same, because that's really the most important part, and say connect, then it will pull it back in. And so it would have got the new updates to that Excel file. And, and I don't have to redo anything in the app, right? So remove it and then just add it or re-import it. And as long as you removed it first, it'll import with the same name, as long as the table name's the same, and then boom, you're off to the races. I didn't have to rewire anything to do it. So a little bit of a trick there. Okay, so that's how you use this one. So what's a better way? If you really, really, really wanna to get to an Excel file and you want to have it read right, what I want you to do is I want you to take that Excel file. So let's take um, doggy data. Where are you at, doggy data? Okay, there's doggy data. I'm gonna switch my browser over here to my OneDrive for Business. I'm gonna put doggy data into my OneDrive for Business. Here you go, it's uploading, it's uploaded, awesome. Now I'll go over here to Power Apps, Add Data, search for Excel again. This time we're gonna use Excel Online Business. I already have a connection, awesome. And so then now it's like, hey, what Excel OneDrive file do you want? And so now I would have to start like flipping through all the different locations. So it is in my OneDrive for business. So go into there and then my OneDrive. And so in here I should have a folder called like my demos or something of that nature. Demo files, there we go. And then there is doggy data. So now if I do this, now it shows me the dog table. And when I import this, you're gonna see here in a second, insert auto-generate ID into Excel or use a unique column. So this is saying, hey, but your Excel file didn't have a primary key, right? The way that I know which row I'm working with, do you want me to automatically generate one of those? So it'll just create one with random characters, which is what I'm gonna go with, or I could create a, my own unique column. So I could say, hey, there's already a primary key column in there. You just didn't know it, and it is this column. Right? So if I hit this, it would show me my columns. And then I could get interrupted by Chewy barking. And then finally, I could choose that, oh yeah, you know, one of these columns that's already in my table is unique. So I don't have a unique column in there. I'm not gonna worry about that, but I'm just gonna say use auto-generated. So we'll say connect. And so then now this is gonna pull this in. Now notice it named it dog table underscore one. Why did it do that? because dog table, the name was already taken, but now I can use this as a read writable data source. So I could delete rows, I could edit data, I could create data, right? I can use as an interactive data source, which was not possible when it was a, a static data import. So just something to keep in mind as you uh, work with this, right? And I have another video that if you've never used Excel as a data source, you wanna get started with that, I'll put a link to that somewhere up there. It's a little bit old, but that's okay. It's still all the, it, the UI looks a little different, but all of the techniques and things you'll learn to use that are in there. And so finally, the last little point I wanna make here is that as a rule of thumb, you know, here at Power Apps 91, we've built over a thousand customer apps at this point. You know, I've been doing this for a really long time. We do not really like Excel as a data source, right? Excel files are meant to be used by one person. They work really well for one person. But when you start building Power Apps, you wanna have a real data source behind the scenes. If you have premium licensing, that would be built on top of probably Dataverse, maybe Azure SQL. 
Or if you don't have premium licensing, then you would want to go build that using SharePoint list as your backend data source. Something that's a little bit more scalable, a little more robust, you know, and I have a whole video, I guess I'll point to that one too, that talks about how, uh, why I think Excel is a terrible data source. So I'll, I'll save you that if you want to hear that, you know, rant, <laughs> there's a whole video for that. But just keep in mind that if I wanted to build this app using dog table one, I mean, I can now, right? No big deal. I can even go here and be like, hey, you, instead of dog table, use dog table underscore one. And since the column names all line up, it just jumped in. This still has an error, but that's because dog table can't have be removed from, but dog table underscore one can. So now I got all that functionality. Oh yeah, my patch button didn't work, right? Same thing. Just go fix this thing, underscore one. And then right here, underscore one, boom. Now we can even add to the data source using patch, right? Or if we pull the form in, I'm not going to, it would all work as well. So hopefully that gives you some ideas around how to use all of this. Um, you know, like I said, I. I've never used it for a real customer app, but you guys asked, so I want to talk about it. Maybe you want to use it to populate some drop downs because that data is never going to change. You don't want to type it all in your app. I don't know. You, you probably have a legit reason. I'm okay with your legit reason. I just wanted you to know that it's this import from Excel is not something we ever use around here. It just never come up. And using Excel online business there as a data source, also not something we're huge fans of. Though Microsoft's done a little bit to improve it, so it is getting better. And I think that's everything for today. If you have any questions, comments, other ideas for obscure things like import from Excel that don't uh, get enough coverage, leave them below. I'm always after comments. I try to read all of them. I try to respond to as many as I can. I used to respond to all of them, but I get too many at this point, so I have no longer no to do that. Yeah, and I guess for that, I'm going to say thanks and have a great day. Hey, me again. Before you go, click on the subscribe button, right? Join the list of 100,000 plus people that subscribed already. Or if you need any help, right? Check us out at Power Apps 91. We do big projects, little projects. We do training. We do everything and we can help you. Or if you want to see more videos, you probably do, then just click on the playlist above. Cool. Thanks and have a great day.